My name is Peter Doggers. I'm a chess journalist and author of the book The Chess Revolution. My father taught me chess when I was about eight, nine years old. And a few years later, a neighbor friend of mine was going to his uncle and he asked me, do you want to join because uh, we're going to play chess. This uncle had a very beautiful chess set, but he also had a lot of uh, books about it. And it was the first time I learned that there were uh, books about chess. And uh, he was also a big fan of Bobby Fischer. And uh, soon, uh, like a few years later, uh, Fischer was also my big idol. Chess is about 1500 years old and from the very start, it became part of our culture because it was sort of a model for, well, first for, uh, for a war fight. The, the two armies at the chessboard uh, were clearly formed uh, as, a, as an Indian army, because the game uh, originates from India. As soon as the game entered Western society during the Middle Ages, the pieces were sort of reformed to uh, roles in society with a queen and a king, a bishop and, and the knight, uh, the fighting knights and, and the towers, the rooks. So from the first uh, moments, it was, uh, it was bigger than just a game. And it always stayed like that because then it kept appearing in art and in literature and uh, later in, in science and in all areas of our culture basically. So it, it uh, kept reinforcing its own uh, magical power uh, until uh, the present day. While doing my research for it, uh, a lot of research I did here in the Max Euer Center in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, uh, yeah, I basically found out that it is still much bigger than I uh, anticipated. There are so many more uh, things to talk about, uh, so many great stories and anecdotes. Uh, and I tried to, uh, to include uh, a lot of them, uh, basically the best, the best examples and the best stories uh, in the book. It's really fascinating to see how chess has changed in, uh, in the last uh, like half century or so. And it all started with a strong influence of uh, AI on chess, uh, the computer. And then uh, we had this uh, pivotal moment uh, for both AI and chess in 1997, when uh, IBM's computer Deep Blue uh, defeated Garry Kasparov, uh, seen as the moment when computers became too strong uh, for, uh, for human players to, to play the game. That was uh, also more or less the start of a big change for chess itself when the computer started to really influence how, how we are playing it and how we are preparing uh, for, for new games, how we are uh, doing our research. And the next very big moment uh, in this development was a uh, research paper from 2017 by Google DeepMind. They introduced their chess playing program Alpha Zero which suddenly was much, much stronger than any existing chess program. It was based on neural networks, so a very new way of, uh, of uh, developing uh, chess engines. And since then, uh, yeah, the game and even the playing style of top grandmasters, including Magnus Carlsen, have changed because this new chess engine has taught uh, humans to play the game differently than ever before. What makes a great chess player, uh, of course, first and foremost, is that he is uh, He's a very strong player and they will often uh, play in a very distinct style. Uh, it can be uh, beautiful attacking chess, it can also be positional or defensive chess, like Catanacho in football. There are different ways of, of winning games. Then there are players who uh, bring a lot of their uh, personality uh, into the game, but also outside the chess boards. For example, Magnus Carlsen, who uh, at the board is a fantastic endgame player, but uh, outside the chessboard, he, he did fashion campaigns, he did a kickoff for uh, Real Madrid, so he's doing a lot of collaborations with, uh, with partners uh, outside the chess world. My book, The Chess Revolution, is uh, both intended for, for chess fans, uh, but also for the general audience. I'm showing in my book uh, that it has been part of uh, literature and art and theater and science basically from the very start, over 1500 years. We've come across it just about everywhere. And uh, nowadays, if we switch on a television series from The Wire to The Crown to Friends, uh, Big Bang Theory, there will always be at some point a chess scene somewhere. It's a very classical and traditional game. And still, only in a few uh, decades, there has been incredible changes suddenly into, for the game and for the sport. Yeah, this is both because of the computer, but also because of the internet. And you can follow it on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, with big commentators like Hikaru Nakamura and Levi Rosman, who calls himself uh, Gotham Chess. 
Uh, and this has led to an incredible surge in, uh, in popularity uh, of the game in recent years and uh, really transformed the game into something that you not, cannot only play but also can watch and enjoy. So this is an amazing uh, new development and uh, I call it a revolution and uh, I thought it was a story that deserved to be told. There are thousands and thousands of, uh, of books about chess actually but they're all for, uh, for players, for, for fans uh, who want to get better at the game. Uh, technical instruction books. Uh, well, I'm uh, writing about uh, the world behind it and uh, yeah, why, why the game is so magical and uh, who are the great players and what are the great stories. Uh, so uh, in that sense, I think the book is rather unique.